So last week I put out a really fun video, a vlog from the parks, I really enjoyed making it, but in that video I talked a little bit about E.T. Adventure, specifically saying this. As we've seen with a lot of recent aesthetic changes, like with the posters and the adventure passports, that maybe we're seeing a new age for E.T. It did survive the large kid zone uh, demolition plan, so it's clear that Universal knows the fans love E.T. and I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Now, I've been wanting to make a video about the changes coming to E.T. Adventure at Universal Studios Florida, and it seems like there are only more coming. So I wanted to make this video to talk about the changes that we've seen thus far, sort of speculate what those changes could mean for the attraction in the future, and just answer the question, what is going on with E.T. Adventure? E.T. Adventure is the only opening day ride still open at Universal Studios Florida, opening all the way back in 19. While it opened alongside attractions like Confrontation and Jaws, this is the only one left, and was really a passion project for Steven Spielberg as well as Universal Studios, creating an attraction based on one of his most personal films. For those who haven't been on it, this is a suspended dark ride that both takes you through events found in the first E.T. film released in 1982, as well as continues that story by bringing you to E.T.'s home planet, which you have been tasked to save. Over the years, the ride has been praised for its ride system, its unique characters, and of course the smell found within its queue, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. Now, you're probably wondering why E.T. Adventure remains at the park when all of these other attractions have closed. Well, while this has not been officially confirmed by Universal, there have been heavy rumors for many, many years that there is a contract in place that while Steven Spielberg is alive, this ride must remain at Universal Studios Florida by his orders. And if Universal was to get rid of this attraction, he would suspend the use of all of his intellectual properties from the parks. That means Jaws, and more importantly than anything, Jurassic Park, which is one of Universal's biggest franchises in the parks. However, because of it being an original Universal Studios Studios attraction, it's gained an almost cult following, becoming a go-to for many die-hard Universal fans such as myself. And honestly, it's my favorite ride at Universal Studios Florida. I've said that in past videos, but it really is. I love the sets, I love the animatronics, I love the score, I love the nostalgia, and that's something that Universal has been noticing with these new changes. And we can really see this beginning around October slash November of last year, when Universal announced the large-scale closure of the Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone land but specifically mentioned in that announcement that E.T. Adventure would be spared. They're planning on keeping E.T. around, which is a base level of security, but the changes go farther than that. Because around the same time, we saw the infamous E.T. smell go through some modifications. Now, for those who never got to experience the original smell, it's the same sort of smell that you can experience in a lot of other older attractions over at Walt Disney World, on attractions like the Haunted Mansion or Spaceship Earth. Now, it's really interesting as I feel like the smell is different every single time I walk through it, but it's a lot more of a manufactured pine scent this time. That, plus the ride itself actually got some smell upgrades, with the flying scene getting a more perfumey, almost pirate water magic candle company type of smell, and the landing on the green planet sort of having a volcanic, Rome burning kind of smell. And I say this because I don't think this is entirely a coincidence when Universal has a pretty strong partnership with the magic candle company and is also manufacturing their own ride based candles. Now, smells aside, what other changes have come to E.T. Adventure as of recently? Well, we just saw the 40th anniversary of the E.T. film last year, which meant a lot of new merchandise and promotion coming to the Universal Parks. And alongside that promotion, we got those 20th anniversary posters removed and replaced with more generic yet retro feeling posters that evoke the 80s atmosphere created by the movie. We also got new designs for the adventure passports, keeping in the style of these new posters outside. Now while the 20th anniversary posters are really nostalgic for me as I sort of grew up with going on the ride while those posters were available, I really like these new designs, I really love a lot of the 40th anniversary art they used for E.T., and I'm liking that some of it's going into the ride and also being a little more generic to E.T. the Extraterrestrial rather than some two decade old re-release. Anyway, this is all known stuff. I've talked about this in videos in the past. What is new to prompt me to make this new video? 
Well, it's this, new construction going on around the E.T. facade and rerouting the entrance of the attraction as well as E.T.'s toy shop. The entire entrance facade is covered by construction walls, and guests are being routed through the pre-show room, which is not currently running the pre-show, into the attraction. What does this mean? What does this change mean for the future of ET Adventure? And does this mean we're going to be seeing some more sizable changes coming to the attraction? Now first, let's talk about the entrance facade. It's classic, but also doesn't really go with any sort of modern theming. It's really a relic of the classic Universal Studios period, and as much as I like that, it does seem inconsistent with what they're going to do with the new Kid Zone expansion. So I could see them overhauling, maybe repainting or reapplying pieces to this facade to make it more modern. Or a more extreme option, I can see them completely rerouting the entrance of the attraction to begin with. So as you can see, this is an overhead look of the ET Adventure soundstage and the Kid Zone area. Right here is the entrance facade for ET, and right here is the Kid Zone area. What I'm guessing is the beginning of this new themed land, whatever expansion is coming to Kid Zone over here. So what I'm proposing is possibility. Not sure if this is going to happen. Probably not. But there is a possible chance, now that this is being worked on, that they could be thinking of rerouting the E.T. Adventure entrance to fit in more into the Hollywood section of the park. I don't think they'll use this area as this is where the parades go. Uh, I don't think they would block that up with an attraction facade. It would just be a little too inconvenient for the performers. But I do think it is a possibility that the Media Center could become the new home for a facade or entrance to E.T. Adventure. Here is the Kids Zone Pizza and SpongeBob store panel building and I don't think these are going to last throughout this entire situation it just seems kind of odd that they kept them there but maybe they kept them there for the reason of of course using them later as ET adventure Q space I could see a facade uh, starting right here with the media center possibly going through this area and into the show building over here into where I guess the old facade would be sort of to act as a more extended queue and then maybe even using SpongeBob store pants as possibly the ET toy gift shop um, again this is not confirmed or anything like that um, this is just a general idea looking at the Google Earth spot and sort of pinning out where this building is in relation to everything else that they could be using this now I know it's been talked about in the past of rerouting the entrance of ET to accommodate whatever could be coming to kid zone I don't think it is it could just be them repainting or reapplying stuff on the facade and I'm overemphasizing this change but I think this is the first step that we're going to to see to something bigger. Notice all the little changes that I've been talking about, and notice what's absent right now at ET Adventure. We saw the 20th anniversary posters go away. We saw the Adventure Passports, also released around the time of the 20th anniversary, go away. And what do we not have right now? A pre-show, filmed during the 20th anniversary. Which means that I think we could be getting a new E.T. Adventure pre-show. While the attraction doesn't need a new pre-show, in order to keep the pace of all the other changes going on, I wouldn't be surprised if the pre-show is also changed. I think it will still feature Steven Spielberg, as he's still around, you could still get him to do the pre-show. Maybe some updated graphics, maybe in more of an HD quality. And as far as the attraction itself, I don't think we're going to see any super fundamental changes. I think it's still going to be a great classic nostalgic adventure. But I also think and hope with some of the new sensory experiences within the ride itself that some of the animatronics and sets get some love. There have been effects that have been broken for a few years now and some of the sets just look a little duller than they can be. So I wouldn't be surprised if with all of these little touches out front we actually see some changes go into the attraction. Now you're probably thinking, why would they update ET Adventure of all attractions? Well, think about what's going right next to it. You're getting a brand new themed land, some new themed attractions at least, if not a whole land, as well as a new state-of-the-art park coming just down the street in just a couple years. As we've been seeing across the park, they've been making changes to update Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure to meet the standard of an epic universe. So I think these updates to ET Adventure sort of speak to that modernization of the Universal Studios park while still keeping what's so classic about it. And as much as I love the original attraction, I'm really happy that they're putting effort and time into E.T. rather than just canning it. Contracts aside, Universal could just let this ride go into disrepair, not touch it until it's too much of a hassle to keep around. 
but I feel like they recognize the nostalgia and the classic element that comes with E.T. It's the last connection really to that opening day park. And it's a great place to sort of see where Universal Studios Florida started. I'm not sure when they're going to finish changing E.T. I don't know if that's going to be all throughout this year, if it's going to be something that bleeds into next year, if this is the extent of the changes, maybe they're just doing some repainting outside, and this whole video is entirely irrelevant. But what do you think? Do you think they're really going to go all in and changing E.T. Adventure? What do you think of the stuff they've already done to E.T. Adventure? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I had an entirely different video planned for this week, but I looked at my Twitter and saw that they completely blocked off the iconic entrance of E.T. Adventure and instantly wanted to make this video. But if you enjoyed this video, enjoy some Universal deep dives, enjoy some Universal updates and news as well as some Disney updates and news. I don't forget about the House of Mouse over there across the street. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And with all that being said, thank you all for watching this video, and I'll see you all next time. Take care, everybody.